Hello, you're watching Bay News Bulletin. I'm Bonga from Manu, and now the headlines as usual. State leader addresses APEC leaders in formal dialogue with guests. Supporting ethnic minority women in improving livelihoods. And later on, Baria Vung Tao moves towards green tourism for sustainable development. The President Lung Kung paid an official visit to Peru and participated in the 2024 APEC Economic Leaders Week from November 12th to 16th. The following report highlights the leaders' activities. State President Luong Kuang delivered a speech at the APEC leaders' informal dialogue with guests in Lima on November 15th, local time. This dialogue drew leaders and heads of delegations from 21 APEC member economies, alongside representatives from three guest partners, the United Arab Emirates, UAE, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and the Development Bank of Latin American and the Caribbean, CAF. The Vietnamese leader said Vietnam is ready to cooperate with other APEC economies and partners to promote effective interregional connectivity that benefits all people and businesses. With its favorable geographical location in Southeast Asia and a modern logistics network, Vietnam is well positioned to serve as a bridge for expanding trade and fostering interregional links, he stated. The same day, the state president had a meeting with Indonesian President Prabowo Subianto. Discussing future cooperation orientations, the leaders agreed to lift the bilateral relations to a new height towards a celebration of the 70th founding anniversary of the Vietnam-Indonesia diplomatic ties and 80 years of the National Day of both nations in 2025. The Indonesian side agreed to expand economic cooperation, aiming to raise the two-way trade to 18 billion U.S. dollars. Meeting with Prime Minister of New Zealand Christopher Luxon on the same day, the Vietnamese leader affirmed that Vietnam attaches great importance to and hopes to promote the strategic partnership with New Zealand. The two leaders agreed to strengthen economic cooperation, aiming for a two trade target of three billion US dollars by 2026, with a larger goal set for the subsequent period. Emphasizing that Vietnam is a priority partner for New Zealand in the region, Luxon suggested that the two countries actively coordinate to develop a roadmap for elevating their relationship to new heights in the near future. State President Luong Kuang also met with Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, China, John Lee Kachiu, on November 15th. The two sides agreed to encourage relevant agencies, ministries, sectors, and localities to work closely together to implement the shared perceptions between top leaders of Vietnam and China. They also agreed to strengthen coordination in citizen protection, judicial matters, and law enforcement, and to create favorable conditions for the Vietnamese community in Hong Kong. According to the report presented at the 8th session of the 15th National Assembly, Vietnam's economy has shown optimistic growth despite global challenges. It is estimated that 14 out of 15 targets will be met or even surpassed this year. The General Department of Taxation reported that total state budget collection in the period from January to October was estimated at over 55 billion U.S. dollars, reaching 94.8 percent of the annual projection and up 16.3 percent year on year. Meanwhile, the cumulative trade value soared by 15.8 percent annually to nearly 648 billion U.S. dollars. These positive outcomes have sparked optimism about the prospect of Vietnamese economy this year and the following. This year in session not only reviews 2024's economic results, but also makes a comprehensive assessment for the 2021 to 2025 term, preparing for party congresses at different levels in 2025 and the National Party Congress in 2026. 
Through the government's report submitted to the National Assembly, we all can see that the 2024 achievements lay a solid foundation for the successful conclusion of this term, setting the stage for sustained growth. The overall objective for 2025 is to further promote economic growth, ensure macroeconomic stability, control inflation, and focus on innovation, digital transformation, and green development. In the disadvantaged commune of Ang Nua, Dien Bien Province, the Voices of Equality Project is providing financial aid and training on gender equality for ethnic minority women. Join us to see more in the film report. Previously, the family of Lung Van Van and Tong Thị Hương in Na Luang Hamlet, Ang Nua Komen, had a hard time living in poverty. In early 2024, the family was among 15 households in the common to receive interest-free loans from the Voices for Equality project. With this financial support, they expanded the coffee production and raised chickens and ducks to improve their livelihoods. In addition to the loan, they attended gender equality and domestic violence prevention training sessions. With the loan, in addition to buying fertilizer to care for our coffee trees, we also bought chickens and ducks to raise, which helped improve our economic situation, making life better. After the gender equality training, I started sharing household chores with my wife, and it's a relief for my family. Established in 2022, the women's coffee farming group in Na Luang Hamlet, led by Lo Thi Tien, initially struggled due to a lack of funds, resulting in low productivity. But in 2024, the group received an interest-free loan from the project, allowing them to expand coffee cultivation in the area. They also participated in training sessions under the Voices for Equality project. We learned a lot about communication skills and how to interact with others. This knowledge helped us understand gender equality between men and women, between husband and wife, and between parents and daughters-in-law. We also learned the importance of self-worth. The Voices for Equality project has implemented various activities to raise awareness and provided loan support for improving livelihoods for locals in Ang Nga Komen. The project has also organized training sessions for ethnic minority men and women on gender equality and domestic violence prevention. The fund has helped bring about significant changes in the lives of many ethnic minority families. We've seen more men participating in family and community activities. Moving forward, we hope to continue collaborating with the For Vietnam's Posture Fund to implement activities targeting ethnic minorities, especially women in difficult circumstances. The Voices for Equality project is supported by the Vita Velvet Fund or For Vietnam's Posture in English, Buck A Bank and TH Group. After 10 years of operation as a nonprofit social fund, the For the Vietnam's Posture Fund will continue to promote programs that are designed to create lasting positive changes in awareness and practices at four levels, individual, family, community, and policy. Ho Chi Minh City and eight northeastern provinces have defined developing typical creative tours, routes, and destinations as the key activity to boost their tourism links in the coming time. In 2024, Ho Chi Minh City and the eight provinces of Bac Can, Bark Song, Cao Bong, Lang Sern, Tai Nguyen, Tuen Quang, Quang Ninh, and Vinh Phuc defined to promote local tourism products, as well as diverse and unique natural tourism resources of the region. With the support of Ho Chi Minh City, the tourism promotion of the northeastern provinces saw positive changes with more tourism services and products launched to attract visitors. 
In 2025, Ho Chi Minh City and the northeastern provinces will study, develop and renew unique and typical tourism products of the region, expand the tourist market and develop separate promotion strategies for each product, tour and connecting route. The provinces and Ho Chi Minh City will coordinate to implement tourism promotion programs in key international tourism markets such as China, the Republic of Korea, Japan, India and Europe, and participate in international tourism promotion events. Barrio Vung Tho is moving towards sustainable green tourism. The province is developing eco-friendly tourism, encouraging the use of renewable energy and minimizing waste, attracting environmentally conscious travelers. New generation tourists have a tendency to care about and take responsibility for nature and the environment. Recognizing this trend, the tourism industry of Barrio Vũng Tàu has been developing tourism products that highlight unique cultural values and pristine ecosystems, while also calling for investment in green tourism projects. The province has set a goal of developing green tourism in line with state criteria, including green experiences, green products, green accommodations, green investments, and the use of green energy. We are developing about 230 tourist sites and 54 routes, with a focus on green tourism. We aim to have all facilities, from accommodation to restaurants, adopt green practices, like using clean energy and avoiding single-use plastics. From the success of several pilot community-based tourism models, in 2022, the People's Committee of Barrio Vungto issued a plan to develop community tourism products in the province through 2025. The plan emphasizes building and developing community-based tourism models tied to environmental protection and natural ecosystem conservation. Currently, there are Currently, there are around 30 community-based ecotourism models in the province, primarily concentrated in Childuk and Suyen Mok districts. Soy Rao Eco Lodge will continue its mission of environmental conservation, aiming to have 1,000 species of plants and animals in our area by 2025. We encourage visitors to embrace eco-friendly practices and create similar spaces in their communities. So when I want to get back to nature, I will always come out to Eco Lodge because I know that I'll be surrounded by fresh air, I'll have plenty of healthy food, and there's plenty of friend friendly people. In early September, the Sui Rao Eco Lodge tourist site in Chiodu District was awarded the Carbon Neutral Destination Certification. This is the first destination in the province to be officially recognized as carbon neutral. The district is working closely with enterprises to ensure the comprehensive growth of green and sustainable tourism. This aligns with the government's direction to promote a circular economy and a green economy, which will not only attract more tourists, but also enrich the variety of tourism products. Despite the barrier of those limited land resources for expanding green tourism models, the flexibility and responsiveness of the business community, along with strong support from local authorities, have led to the gradual development of the ecotourism and farm experience models. Green tourism stems from the desire of businesses and residents to see their economy and local area thrive. To achieve that, they must take responsibility for protecting the environment. Building environmental awareness among businesses in the community is essential for preserving the tourism landscape. Additionally, the government need to provide support to offer convenience and comfort for tourists. Barry Vũng Tàu is forging ahead with ecotourism. The local government and businesses are committed to further expanding green tourism initiatives, ensuring sustainable growth in the province. And that's wrap up our news bulletin. Thanks for watching and see you next time.